This machine is what's called as a drill, a vertical drill mill machine. And in its current setup, we're holding a standard drill bit above a, a vise. And this illustrates um, certain aspects of holding your work. So what we want to do whenever we're using a drill is have absolute control of the work because it will tend to climb the drill bit, which can put things out of control and hurt fingers. And so we do not want to be holding things with our hands when we're using such a drill, including a drill press or the drill mill. It's a very simple matter to clamp your work in, in this device. This device has many axes of control. The left and right control are, are given here. There's a digital readout, which we can turn on to read out to a ten thousandth of an inch. And so we can control left and right, back and forth, and up and down. So we can position our work very precisely. Furthermore, the device allows us to rotate on this axis, so the entire head can be rotated this way, and in and out with this device to move the whole head there, and then we can rotate it about this axis. So this is called a five axis head, one more rotation this way here. So we can rotate about this axis, this axis, and that axis. So a very flexible tool. It functions much like a drill press in that we have a lever here which draws the tool downward and withdraws the tool. We can control the depth by putting a stop in, temporary stop, or we can spin up a, a, a threaded stop. Okay. The device is powered with this. There's a high range, in which case the tool goes uh, clockwise in high range, or we can change the range over here to low range, and then going down it goes clockwise in low range. But watch out, if you don't change this setting, then it'll go the wrong direction. So you must operate the tool in the range that's specified on this little nameplate here, high or low range. Okay. And right now it's in low range, so if I turn it on in low range, it turns clockwise. The speed of the tool is adjusted here, and just like in the previous drill press, we put it into motion, and then we can adjust it. The tool has a brake here to stop the rotation. This is useful when we're changing tools. Using this bar, we will loosen the chuck and the tool will be removed. Changing tools is fairly easy. It's done with this tool, which we always leave in that location. We put on the brake, put this on here, go counterclockwise to loosen, and this. And you'll notice that I've gone counterclockwise, and now I can do it with my hand, and the tool hasn't fallen out. And that's acceptable because it's put into a conical wedge which has to be released by a, a light thump. And now it's loose. And now I can fully withdraw it. So it, it's wedged in. And you never want to let this tool drop. So you have to be very careful. When you're using a heavy bit here, then a, a real point of, of, uh, of risk is that a heavy bit should fall in your hands. So when you're handling large uh, tooling on this machine, you certainly want to wear gloves. So that's a little bit about how to change the speed of the tool, how to change the angles of the tool, how to change the depth of the tool. Generally speaking, if we're not use, if we're using it as a mill, we will lock this, and then this cannot be moved. Now the tool is locked, and then we can adjust the position of the work using these and do our work by X, Y, and Z motion controlled by these levers. And that's classical milling. By unlocking this, now we're in a drill press mode, and that's uh, where we leave the X, Y, and Z stable. Okay? This tool is a very powerful tool, um, and it has motion where your hands may be close by. So what does that mean? That means we have to keep our hands clear of the tool, we have to tell everyone in the vicinity not to go near the tool, and we have to wear eye protection in case, in case this should break, but also because it generates chips. And those chips can come flying off of this machine at high temperature. In fact, 
Doing classical milling operations, sometimes the chips are so hot they come off blue. They have discolored due to high temperature. They will burn your skin if they touch you. So you have to have good protection of your body so that these burning hot chips do not touch your body. Okay? Lubrication is essential in using this machine. So when you're doing cutting, you always have to use the appropriate lubricant for the work you're working with. Okay? Metal versus aluminum, stainless, brass, all take different lubrication. And um, the details of the rate of cut is a function of the rotational speed and the type of material and the depth of the cut. So once again, you'll have to refer to standard tables to identify the rate of cut that would be appropriate for your tool, for your, your uh, operation. And that would be dictated by how quickly you're turning things or how quickly you're plunging. Okay. The tooling for this machine are located for the most part over here. And so we have a selection of standard mill ends for making different size slots, for example. We have what are called ball mills that are for making nice rounded cuts and other tooling for creating flat surfaces. We have these uh, larger cutting heads that can go on the mill. Okay, that's all I'd like to say about the mill for the moment.